I'm very excited here to share some of the data that's very, very enthusiastic about. So this is a Cartitude 1 study, which is a phase 1b2 study of J&J4528 in relapsed and refractory multiple myeloma patients. As we know, multiple myeloma is a rare blood cancer. There's the third most common blood cancer accounting for about 10% of all hematological malignancies. There's 160,000 new cases worldwide per year. That's about 1% of worldwide new care cancers. In the US, there's about 25,000 new patients diagnosed with a mortality of 13,000. We know that there's been a lot of advances in the last few years over multiple myeloma drugs, and so people are living longer. However, if you're a patient who's failed all cl available classes of therapy, your median overall survival is less than 12 months. So we really need a product that we can give to patients that hopefully we can cause deep, sustained re responses. And CAR-T initially was thought this was gonna cure the patients. But we found that maybe cure is not the right word yet, but maybe we can give a one-time treatment for these patients who, as you know from myeloma patients, they're coming once a week or sometimes two times a week to get infusions. So j and 4528 what's unique about it, it's structurally distinct. It's a second-generation chimeric antigen T-cell therapy with two BCMA-targeting single domains. So the CARTITUDE-1 study is a dose confirmation study based on the Phase I uh, LEGEND-2 study, but it was done in a slightly different population. So the primary objective of the Phase 1b, as are most Phase 1 studies, to characterize the safety and confirm the Phase 2 dose, as I mentioned, by informed by the LEGEND-2 study. The Phase 2 portion is to evaluate efficacy. So some of the key eligibility criteria here you can see are the patients have progressive myeloma. So all patients must be progressing. They have to have measurable disease in their blood or bone marrow, so you have to be able to see an M protein or serum-free light chains. They must have had at least three prior therapies and received all classes of available agents, so a PI, at least one PI, one IMID, and an anti-CD38. So to the right, you see actually the study design. So after the patients were enrolled, they all got their cells apheresed. So this gets sent off to the manufacturing company, and it takes about four to five weeks to get these cells remanufactured. During this time, as you know, these patients are heavily pretreated, so you were able to give them bridging therapy to kind of keep them stable before the patients are infused with their cells. Then the patient gets lymphodepleting chemotherapy with fludarabine and cytoxin. What this does is wipes out their T cells so that when you can reinfuse the new manufactured engineered cells, they can do their job. So the target dose is 0.75 times million. Um, CAR T cells per kilogram of body weight. So I want to point that out as some of the CAR Ts are a flat dose of 300 million, 450 million, but here you're giving it um, CAR T cells per kilogram of body weight. And the median administered dose was 0.73 million um, CAR T cells per kilogram of body weight, so which is very close to the target dose. Today we'll only be talking about the phase 1b portion of the study, which had a median follow-up, a data cutoff of six months. So in the phase 1b portion, we treated 29 patients with a median age of 60, and half of them were female. So all patients were heavily pretreated. As you can see, the, the prior lines of therapy was five, and it ranged anywhere from three to 18. 18 is quite high, so these patients are quite refractory. 100% of these patients are triple exposed, meaning that they've had exposure to three different classes, such as PI, IMID, and a CD38. 86% of those patients were triple refractory to those classes. And 72% of the patients were penta-exposed, meaning they've been exposed to two PIs, two IMIDs, and anti-CD38. And 31% of the patients are refractory to all five drugs. So here we report the safety data of the study. So as you can see, the most common grade three or four adverse event was hematological, which is as expected and non-hematological AEs are very uncommon. So we only had two patients who had increased AST, which is a lab abnormality, one patient with ALT, and one patient had diarrhea. Um, in terms of cytokine release syndrome, all but two patients had cytokine release syndrome, with 86% of the patients having mostly grade one or two CRS. One patient had a grade three CRS event, and one patient had a prolonged dose-limiting toxicity of grade four CRS, which converted to a grade five event at 
and the patient passed away from complications at day 99. So as we mentioned, these are very heavily pretreated patients, and so see, getting early and deep responses is quite amazing. Every single patient on the study responded, so we had 100% overall response rate. Every single patient had a reduction in their paraprotein, and if you break that 100% response rate down further, you can see 69% of the patients were in complete response, meaning that they had no evidence of bone marrow cells, uh, no evidence of myeloma cells in their bone marrow or in their blood. 86% of the patients were very good partial remission or better. The median time to first response was one month, as was the median time of CR. We had 17 evaluable patients, which what we look for is MRD negative status, and all 17 patients were MRD negative. 27 of the 29 patients are still progression free at six months follow up. Here we're going to discuss briefly about the pharmacokinetics of this study. And as I mentioned, every single patient expanded their T cells and they were consistent. So the peak happened around day 10, ranging between day 10 to 14 with CRS proceeding about three days prior. So you started having CRS, you had the slow expansion of these T cells, and um, as you can see on the right, what we think makes this product a little bit more unique is the preferential expansion of the CD8 central memory phenotype. So what that means is CD8 cells are used to kill your myeloma cells, but these central memory cells um, have a way of, we think, of not getting exhausted as often and having sustained effector function. So in conclusion, the CARTITUDE 1 study confirmed the recommended phase 2 dose of 0.75 million CAR T cells per kilogram of body weight. It was a very safe and tolerated product. Um, like I said, 86% of the patients had mostly grade 1 and 2 CRS with very rare neurotoxicity. They, there were early and deep responses observed in this heavily pretreated patients with 100% overall response rate and CR rates of 69%. Out of the 29 patients, 27 patients are still progression-free at a median of six months follow-up. And all 100% of the patients who are MRD evaluable were MRD negative. And JNJ4528 exhibits this preferential expansion of the CD8 central memory phenotype. So in conclusion, the safety and efficacy results are very consistent with the LEGEND2 study. The phase two portion of the study has been fully enrolled, and the phase two and three studies have been initiated. And just yesterday, um, FDA actually gave JNJ452A breakthrough designation for relapsed refractory myeloma patients.